Today at PressureWasher.net with Jerry, we're going to talk about 12-volt systems in pressure washers. Go ahead, Jerry. Well, Ron, uh, a 12-volt heater system is only going to be reliable if you've got the right combination of mix. We're going to start with the charging system that can handle 16 amps or better for running a, an ADC uh, burner by Beckett. And uh, the abusability is going to be based on how well you anchor these things in uh, electrically. With, uh, grounding this, we have stainless steel hardware underneath this with a with a uh, a paint-free surface protected with grease. So when it does rain, the no water is going to get in there there and and cause corrosion at the at the fittings. And of course, stainless steel star washers make an excellent electrical connection to ground. We have um, a this is on a Kohler. Uh, a brand new Kohler engine with a 20 amp rated charging system, actually 18 amps to be exact, and we're feeding that to a large battery. This is a Group 51 capable of big cranking amps like the uh, battery in your car. It's got all the standard hardware removed from these, from these battery terminals and upgraded to stainless steel with beefy crimp connections, properly fused connections, fuse holders facing down so rain won't get caught in it. Uh, this is how to make these things reliable. Um, after this is assembled like this, spray it with a battery protector and you've got a protected battery to go along with your beefy charging system. Let's talk about the heater. This heater has a 80 amp relay controlling the high voltage in the fuel solenoid and the, what, what runs this relay is our control circuit which makes the control circuit more reliable, the, contract, the contacts last a long time in your flow switch or pressure switch, whichever one you're using, and the relay does all the work for turning on and off the high voltage, which makes the high voltage last a long time and the fuel solenoid. Also, we have a indicator light to tell us that we're getting power to that relay. That makes it a lot easier for troubleshooting. Let's talk about troubleshooting. On the temperature control, we have another indicator light to, to, so that you know that these switches are going on. When the flow switch goes on and the temperature controls say it's okay to put power down to, uh, down to the relay, we've got an indicator up here. We're using redundant temperature controls because this is the way to make a heater coil last 12 to 15 years. With a beefy control circuit, adding an additional temperature control on the inlet of the heater so that if the water is not flowing we have complete control over the fire. It shuts this heater off long before the temperature control at the top of the heater would, would go off. In other words, with the temperature control down here next to the fire burning, the heat is going to transfer here faster than it's going to transfer up here. That saves a lot of heater coils. Having a redundant pressure control on the heater also adds to the lifespan of the heater. You've probably got a pressure relief valve on the head of your pump, but this industry uses pressure actuated unloader valves. There's a check valve in that unloader valve keeping the, 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 um, pressure, the, the pressure relief valve on the pump from protecting the heater. So having a redundant pressure uh, relief on the heater is the way to protect the heater. This is the way to make a pressure washer heating system reliable on 12 volts. Go to pressurewasher.net if you have more questions or call us at 800-400-CLEAN.